What's up, YouTubers? Um, I elected to make this video because I thought it was significant enough that everybody would like to see it. No, I'm not trying to pull a Dan Newman here. Um, I'm just wanting to show you that on occasion you will find a set of reverse air blade irons on a fan that are not 15 and 15 pitched. What I mean is 15 downdraft, 15 updraft. If you look, you can tell, looking at the other blade across from this one, this one's downdraft, now the one's updraft, you can tell it's significantly steeper. Uh, around 18 or so pitch, give or take a few degrees. Could be 20, don't know. Anyway, because my battery's getting low on my amp meter, I would like to demonstrate this fan to you. Come on, click in, dang it. A la Dan Spiffy Newman style, if you will. Um, I have a clamp on amp meter. He uses, usually uses an inline one. Um, clamp on tends to be a little more accurate. But anyway, here it goes. First, we're going to do locked rotor which you'll see is 2.78977 amps. Then we're going to let it accelerate. 76, 74, 2, 6.5. And we are at now, yeah, it's still accelerating slightly. Tops out at 2.39 amps. It's just a little bit underrated. The reason why it drops so much on this fan is because it is 28 pole which equals a 257 rpm synchronous speed you'll okay you'll notice that the amp draw is now going up as it slows down in the low speed that's just because of different taps in the in the motor which uses less of the winding are at 1.19 amp, which is spot on for where it's supposed to be. Now I'm going to set my phone down and I'm going to reverse this sucker and we're going to look and see what kind of a difference the steeper pitch makes. And here I'd like to show you one thing before I turn it on. Significantly steeper than, than these blade arms on this fan. I could, I wish, I, could, I wish I had time to take this off and show you the difference. But there is a difference. I stuck that antique brass iron on there to confirm that it wasn't just me being crazy. Um. So anyway, here goes. Let's let's go again in updraft mode and again you're gonna see the amp draw drop down but this time I bet you're not gonna see it go down as far as it did it's probably gonna cut wind up being a little bit far a little bit off and you know what actually no it is not that far off and granted my clamp on M meter isn't centered anymore so it may not be getting a fully accurate reading Let's move our wire down to where it's kind of centered again. Let's see if that doesn't change things. Okay, we're at 2.53 versus 2.49 in the downdraft mode. Again, you notice an amp draw go up. And you'll notice that we're significantly slower in the updraft mode on low speed than we were before. Like I said, this particular fan 
blades <clears throat> reverse a little bit steeper than normal. Typically, the reverse air irons are 15 degrees and 15 degrees. They're both the same both directions, as is most of that dares. Occasionally, and I don't know if it is due to a casting difference or if it was just a different spec because you will notice on reverse air blade irons a lot of times most of them have a little square on top some of them have a star these have a star um some such as this one here have a this is one with a square nothing on the bottom some irons will have nothing on the top, as these are, and a little circle there. And the tops are smooth. Let's see if I can find one, find one with a star. I think these ones here, they have the circle as well. I think I've got some more in here. Square. Now you'll also notice, yeah, focus. This is R and M, and then you've got this is SDC four two zero zero six. Um. You'll see, these are a completely different supplier. I don't know what WY stands for. But like I said, they're a completely different supplier than those were. But they're built to similar same specs. Let's see what the antique brass iron I have says. This one's also SDC. But you'll notice that the uh, part number is a little bit different, I think. Is that eight or nine on that? Maybe I'm just being crazy. Um, let's see what else we can pull out. Again, with the SDC. I'm not sure what uh, the various uh, numbers and letters uh, signify on these, so far as that's concerned. I mean, I know that that's the part number on this side, but I would imagine SDC slash YW or whatever is different suppliers. Like, let's see, th this iron here can't even see what it says. It's been painted over. Like these here say Hunter Fan Company. Part number 922276. These ones here say R&M, Robinson Myers. But they're the same iron, just a different finish. And then you got these, say 15 degrees TS. Don't know what TS stands for. I wonder what uh, Comfort Breeze Iron says. And I know I'm really just grabbing for straws here, but nobody knows what these numbers and letters mean. Because you'll see similar markings um, inside of the castings on originals. Like I can use this one here as an example. This is a junker that really doesn't need to be here. This particular example, you can't really see it, but there is, what does that say? Zero one. 
zero zero two and I think that's a seven now let's see what year was this made it was made in a one so therefore you could deduce that maybe this casting was cast January the third uh, what's it say again? Actually, this is 6. 0106 27. So it could be 2001 June 27th. Maybe. Because the fan was made on the 250th day. So, I mean, there are lots and lots of questions about who actually made all of these Hunter Originals. My theory is that Commander Electric made some. And then there were other OEM suppliers of these fans. After 1985 or so, when the Hunter employees bought Hunter from Robbins and Myers. After that point, I believe that the supplier changes stopped and they used only one supplier. Um, some believe that's CEI. Uh, I don't disagree with that. But one thing is for sure. You are liable to see a myriad of different markings on the inside of the Hunter Original. Hunter Originals that were manufactured during the Robbins and Myers period. Some will say made in Taiwan on the inside. Some will say... What do they say? Some will say something, a, a variation of CEC. And then there's ones like these, and I've, I've gotten to where I can tell a build, a build by this supplier, just by, how the, by the quality of the build. Um, the supplier I'm referring to is what I call EIIB or FIIB because the marking is similar to an E and similar to an E. Um, typically... The rotors will not have any kind of paint on them. The windings will not have any overspray, indicating that the windings were out of the fan when it was painted. Um, you'll see all three of these are all the same. They're all FIIB fans, so to speak. Um, let's see, do I have another r &M that's painted? I have this one. Maybe this one has overspray on the windings. It has a little bit, as I'm sure you can see. This, if I recall, was actually labeled Made in Taiwan on the inside. It's a lot to think about. It's a very lot to think about. Well, if you're a fan collector like me, it's a lot to think about. Let's put it that way. <sighs> Thanks for watching, and and I know I really didn't really, so to speak, explain anything. I really just raised more questions about these fans than I did anything else. But uh, one thing's for sure. Every single... Fib, Ib, built fan I've ever ran across has been quiet. Um, the insides have been clean, as in that no paint, overspray anywhere, usually. And they just overall seem to be a higher, higher quality built fan. That's all I've got. Um... Please, please, um, you know, write me comments and everything, and subscribe if you haven't already. And.
and um like I said that's that's all I've got I so many questions thanks guys <laughs>